What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I hope everybody is good. Today's all about resting and recovery, which is ideal because it's my rest day today. So I'll be getting an ice bath and doing a little bit of yoga, which should be entertaining. And I'll be joined with Heba Ali, AKA Evolve Nation. She's a very hardworking, driven, ambitious, intelligent, fit young individual, just like a sister. Ruba Ali, and both of them really are just a breath of fresh air in a world full of OnlyFans and booty pictures. These two really are, in my opinion, the real role models to all the women out there who want to make it not only in the fitness industry, but just want to better themselves and to empower themselves. So I'm really looking forward to today's video and the chat, which we're going to have. Today's video is brought to you by Bionic customized supplements tailored exactly to you and your needs and any potential deficiencies which you may have. A nurse will come around to your house, they'll take your blood, your blood will get sent off to be analyzed and then you'll get a three month supply of a customized formula. I've been with these guys for a year now and I have not looked back ever since. Link in the description to go check them out. Let's head over to the ice bath. So guys, we are back. Longevity sports, it's been a year, a year too long. I should really be coming here way more often, but I haven't. Anyway, we're back. About to dip myself in uh, some rather cold water. I'm not going for five degrees today, I think eight degrees. I've got, I've got some talking to do. And uh, last time I came here, I did the five degrees. Didn't really want to talk to anyone. It's pretty damn cold. And Rob is going to do five degrees. Rob's going to do it as well. Here the ladies. <laughs> These two have actually been a bit of a dynamic duo recently. Hello! The team. Yeah, the dream team. The dream team. I think we you. have all different colliding energies. The calming, the I don't know. The, the, I lift the weights and she lifts the calming and the stretching. I'm the hybrid. You're yeah. the hybrid. You're the combination of this two. Guys, let's go through some like do, don'ts. Don't do this before yeah. I cold plunge. Have a really hard workout like I did this morning. Mm -hmm. Fast it if you have like a weaker immune system. And what else? Uh, lack of sleep. Lack of you're sleep. Doing every, you're one. doing everything yeah. you shouldn't do. Because yeah, so you're doing Ramadan at the moment. So Yeah, so basically I didn't have good sleep last night. I did hard workout this morning. I haven't eaten anything. So this should be fun. I had a good sleep. I haven't done any exercise this morning. And I've eaten and had a drink. So uh, yeah. Okay. This I'm, is like I'm, a recovery I come to the videos. Fully prepared. <laughs> First shorts, by the way. If you don't know, get to know. Probably out of stock, like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, go over to my website and see all the things you can't buy. Have you read in this one? Plunging. Okay, Scuba dive entry. Disclaimer this is much easier to do when you have your attention on your breath work, and I feel like now holding a conversation with Mike. It's going to be that much more challenging. I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. I don't know how um, he's going to get my heart rate to 160. You want to be as calm as possible in this, so please don't challenge me too much. All right. Are we going? Yep. Oh. 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 Mike, you know what really helps? Really big, heavy, heavy breaths. And then your body right now thinks it's under attack, so your mind has to say, I'm healing. So find an anchor word. My anchor word is, I'm healing. And that calms me down. It's the first 30 seconds, which is. You sure this is not five degrees? Once you control the narrative, and you you're, you're go in here with the anchor, your body just follows your mind. My anchor is healing, and then my visual state is like I imagine the physiology of like my cells and how all the inflammation is going down, and that keeps me calm. Tell me more about what you've got going on with Evolve Nation, because that is your baby, isn't it? Yeah, it, it started off with fitness, so Evolve Nation is a mindset and movement-focused brand. Um, three things it stands on, authenticity, resilience, and um, just having the courage to explore the unknown. That is my tagline, explore the unknown. Um, it gets me, it's gotten me to all of the success I've achieved in business and my personal life. It's that ability to say like, hey, I don't know what's over there, but 
I want to go check it out and I and I want to be able to take all of that knowledge and share it with the world. So I, I started in fitness, then I took up psychology in college and I added it in the mindset. So I basically my purpose is to teach people how to optimize their mind and body because your body can be really strong, but if your mindset is very weak, I mean, you're going to be limited in every aspect in your life. And Mike, you know, with business, it's a lot it's a lot of mindset, you know, like you can't carry out the skill sets you have in fitness into business like you can with consistency and discipline, but it's a whole different ball game. And so for me, I'm, I'm more concerned with helping people evolve in every aspect. Um, and I, can, I believe that fitness is that stepping stone, right? Because you do work on your character. Um, and then after that, it evolved into clothing. And I felt like, you know, what's helped me so much is confidence. Confidence is so big and you can be confident when you are who you are and that's what my clothing line stands for it's like every single piece is designed custom by me i travel everywhere in the world i saw you travel too i have a question about thailand but everything is from scratch you know i'm a independent entrepreneur no investors everything has been from scratch every dollar has gone into that that was mine and you know i believe that energy and that good intention is carried out in my clothes and so that's a nutshell there's a lot to say by the way the shorts are really cool that um, picture of you with the boys. I was like, damn, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so are you like, do you travel to like source your fabrics? Did you go on that trip for your clothing line or just a shoot? I teamed up with a company in London who actually built my app and they do a lot of merchandise for people with a following and a potential to make money from doing their own merchandise, basically. So they take care of all the hard work, the logistics, finding the factories to produce it, sending over the design. So actually, I don't really have to do the hard work. My job is just to choose the designs and just sell it and focus on the branding and the marketing. That's amazing. So it's, it's good, but it, I think it will definitely need to get to the stage where I do all of that myself, because they're basically the middleman. And well, they, they take a cut, yeah. so they'll take a 20% cut. Well, but that's, I'm the operational person and the marketer. And I have to tell you, like, be, so being an influencer, oh my God, why am I shivering more than you? <laughs> oh my God, why is this happening? <laughs> Guys, no, I have a lot to say. Bear with me. It's going to come to life. Um, part of being the entrepreneur and the influencer, um, they conflict with, with one another. Uh, so being in operations, you lose a lot of creativity because you get in a very business numbers. You get all the bad news that you don't want to get. A lot of serious matters that become more priority than you know going to for a photo shoot so that has limited me with being like on the forefront of marketing the collections and being like so happy and sh being excited about my launches although i ha i am being in the operations speaking to manufacturers sourcing fabric traveling it is so draining on you it takes up all your hours that like you want to be involved because you can market your clothes better knowing where they're sourced from um where you got your inspiration from but I would just advise you don't go too much into it because you're going to be less of Mike. Well, the reason why I ended up taking it on and proceeding with it was because I realized that doing it this way, it's not going to take up a huge amount of my time. Yeah. And having a team of es experts who actually know the ins and outs of it, they can specialize in doing what they do. And I specialize in doing what I do. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have to spend much of my time doing the things I don't enjoy doing. Even though I would definitely have a great understanding of the business and how the fashion industry works and so on. I'm sure that would help, but I don't want to get too deep into it. I'd rather just employ someone who's very good at it to do that for me. Like there's a guy who I, am, I hired who's basically the marketing director. Because the, the, the biggest thing I struggled with, I started off with the shorts, but the brand was basically exactly the same as my brand. It was just like Mike Thurston's shorts. And I was like, I need to separate it because I don't want it to be about me. It's about something else. Yeah. So this guy is called Rodolfo. His company is Camarazzo. He managed to separate the Thirst brand from my brand. And now it's just taken on its own story and journey. So we basically, it's interesting. We go to cool places. We do a really cool campaign with different models and we have kind of like a story for each campaign. But I really enjoy it because one of my passions is just to travel and have new experiences. So I can get involved with these campaigns. I can, you know, make vlogs, do interesting things, get great content, but at the same time, I see it as being productive and it is a business venture because from it, we do this really cool campaign and 
is a really good way to market the shorts. It's a really good way to storytell, like tie yourself into it, but have the brand stand alone and storytell. And so I like that you do that storytelling because in a way you're traveling and you're sharing a little piece of whatever you want from everywhere you go or you're tying your message to it. And that's what I feel like every clothing brand should have. And I'm glad that yours aligns with that is, you know, being able to deliver a message that when people put on your clothes, they're carrying that out and it serves as that reminder, like you're gearing up in that attitude and in that intention. So that's really cool. Yeah, that, that was a good location for the shoot. Did you ever face any obstacles pursuing <laughs> your sort of dream career, the career which you're pursuing right now? Nothing I did was accepted, um, not just in my career, but I think developing an identity and being independent in the Middle Eastern culture. I want to be careful with my words because there's already a stereotype that women are suppressed and, you know, the Arabic culture is, it doesn't allow women to be like, you know, alpha but women are alpha that's a different conversation but it's just a different culture it's a matter of understanding that the culture is different and you know it's not it just needs to be communicated well what i went up against um growing up very conservative i wasn't allowed to do after school activities i wasn't allowed to hang out with the boys i wasn't allowed to do much and that had its benefits but it also like didn't match my personality type i have two other older sisters who like followed the books and they followed the rules and for me like it didn't fit my personality so i was the rebel and you know traveling was a big no but i did it anyway and my family eventually like i would say it took at least six years for them to come around to it but there was a lot of disapproval for being in the fitness field as a woman it was like shunned down on it wasn't looked at a job of a status or a woman's job and so you know it was hard because i think as children young adults like you do a lot of what you do for your family and growing up with a single mom like i just wanted to make her proud i wanted to support her and my family and so everything for me is driven by family and not having that approval and support and like you know just to say i'm proud of you because i was working from 3 a.m so at night i started working at 13 like i was so bold and so driven for my dreams I think I, at the age of 18, I had to tell myself that my mom is not gonna get it and that doesn't mean she doesn't love me, but she just comes from a different culture. And I remained respectful. I kept my relationship really strong with everyone and I knew eventually they would get to see the side of me that I'm so proud of. And so I kept going and I think when you continue to be authentic in yourself, um, people, they see that and you know, my family, I mean, till this day, there's a little few things, but they're proud of me because, you know, I, I became everything I said I was going to be, and I did it when it wasn't trending. And now being a personal trainer in the Middle East, it's like a status job. But before, it was like, no. And so I think it's important to do things that mean something to you before they're trending. Like, do it, set the trend for yourself. What, what I find really interesting is you have a twin, yeah. Ruba. You look very similar. But what I love is you kind of both have your own separate identity. Like you know how like a lot of twins, they end up just doing everything together and their identity is the twins. At what point did you two kind of decide, right, we're gonna do our own separate thing? I love my sister to death. She's my yin and yang. Like we are two peas in a pot and exactly what you're explaining, like two twins that do everything together, that was us. We slept in the same bed, we did everything together. And I think um, at the age of 18, oh my God, I'm shivering a lot. <laughs> Am I allowed to peep my shoulders out? Yeah, it's Wait, it's colder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, okay, I think I'm gonna get my hands out. This is terrible, Mike, this is worse. What the hell, how are you not shivering? I'm used to it now, Although, but this is all dry. I've been in this position for a long time. Oh, that's so 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes? Yeah. I always wondered what it'd be like to have a twin and whether I would like it or whether I'd find it really annoying. I think it would be cool if I had someone who is literally exactly the same as me, but I think I would definitely need my own space. And I'd be like, just go and just leave me alone for a bit. Cause I, I like mm. to do stuff by myself. I'm, I'm quite introverted. Okay, being a twin, I think at the age of 18, um, I realized that it was really important for us to have our own identities. And um, this might be really hard for me to keep saying while I'm shivering. Is this, is this you, can you guys understand me? <laughs> Why are you keeping this up for The lift is just going brrr. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. Maybe wearing all those clothes 
Maybe wearing the clothes is making it hard for you. I'm answering on the outside because I really want to send this message. It's very important for siblings and even um, uh, just I feel like even only childs to get this message. So, oh my god, my body is numb. Mike. Yeah, I, 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 oh really, I struggle getting out. It's getting out which is the hardest part. I forget to use my legs and I just crumple. I, the shivering gets worse, by the way, after you get out. I know, I know. At the age of 18, I realized, you know, with college, going into different degrees, I was just, it was very hard. Like, there's no, exp like, no way for me to explain, like, two twins separating that were really close because it almost feels like you're abandoning one another and you're just like, but where are you going? And it's just like your body panics because you're so chemically connected and like you just that was your normal that was your norm so it was very important because whether you love each other or not this goes for spouses best friends it's very important to create that space for you each to make your independent um decisions and you know when love is in the mix and you love one another so much you're gonna end up doing things they want to do all the time just because you want to be with them and to have that identity that next level of growth you just need to be able to have more space to yourself more time to think and be able to make um, decisions that you know are based off of what you want to do because you're not like, you know, with your best friend or someone that you're willing to do anything with. Oh, do you want to come out? Yeah, yeah. My, I can't I'll feel my legs. Uh, How's your legs? Just not moving very well. Did it. That was Ow. 20 <laughs> minutes. No, that no, was like 25. 24 for you. Mm -hmm. That was 24 for you. 24 and a half. You guys, I'm honestly really, 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 really shocked that we did that. And I um, had a whole blown conversation with you. Yeah. So if we can do that and have a conversation, you guys can do it also. <sighs> the necklace. Oh yeah, a gift. Gold as well. Although the logo is a bit squashed. <laughs> it's cool though. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should start selling these. Remember throughout this process, it's a lot of breast work. So remember to breathe. And on the exhale, we're going to lean just Yeah, that's as far as I go. And then just back up. Patience, Mike. Inhale. I won't be doing that. <laughs> the hamstrings. <laughs> Good. In and exhale out, lifting that right leg up. This can roll forward into our plank position with that right leg elevated. Chaturanga, slow and controlled, lower the body down. And from here, we're going to roll up into our upward facing up to the ears. Good job. Exhale, comes down to the mat on either leg, and I want you to roll up and roll up. But that's okay. Try it. Try your best. Just, Mike, you're actually doing really well. Yeah, really, really well. Hold that. Very proud of you, Mike. Yes, perfect. Have you ever done that and like actually broken someone? No. You can be the first. Yeah. <laughs> Out here creating you new moves, new positions. Final. So, shall we? What's this one? It's important. Now the slay. Now the Well done. So I was gonna tell you, Mike. I didn't want to interrupt your zen state. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the whole thing with the habit. Um, one thing that really gets me to do it is saying like it's easy to do and easy not to do. And that gives me the answer as to why I don't do a lot of the, things, the habits that I want to develop. So with, for example, meditation, like it's literally never going to enter my life unless I set a time to do it. And in the beginning, it's going to seem forced, but then it just becomes part of your routine. Like just like watching TV or going to the gym. Like for me, if I wake up and don't work out, like you said, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. I'm just like not myself. And eventually like that, stretching routine it has its positive effects similar to working out right it's different it's not like the pump it's not like the same endorphin rush but you're gonna grow 
like this love for it where you feel good in a different way and that becomes your positive reinforcement. So like stretching was never fun for me. Recovery was never fun for me. Like as a intense athlete and competitor, like I never wanted to do any of that. But like as I forced myself to do it, I got to reap the benefits of like, wow, I feel really good. Wow, I'm sleeping better. And that positive reinforcement kept me in the loop. What was the hardest habit that you had to create for yourself? Oh, I would say, create. I would say, I would say like meditation was the hardest for me. Meditation. It was very hard because I have a overly active mind. Um, and we all have a gazillion things to do. And so it's so easy to just put it off and like, you know, cater to the demands of the world. Like I have to go uh, check my emails. I have to go shoot. I have to go do that. We always have so much more things to do. And it's like how we bucket them and prioritize was one of the hardest things for me. So creating the habit with meditation was definitely it. You but, manage to do almost every day. Yeah, but, yeah, but now I'm like trying to do 45 minutes. Oh. 45 minutes is my goal. You look forward to waking up to doing it. It becomes that. Yeah, it makes you feel good. Yeah, it does. Well, I want to have that ability to literally fall asleep immediately when my head hits the pillow. You're, I'm not like that either. It's no. time. I am. I am. Mm. You still? Yeah, completely. Yeah. But I, I do sleep hypnosis, so that's why. You, do you do like a little mental routine before you go to bed? So you get the time to sleep? I start doing my, my sleep time mental routine at around 7.30 p.m. Like I'm in bed at 9, asleep at 9.30 every single night. But what I do is I listen to a gentleman called Michael Seely, and he has different subjects and he goes through sleep hypnosis. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So it depends on the frequency that's comfortable. Some people like complete silence, blackout. When you do have someone influencing the frequencies and you know, you go from alpha, beta and all these different you know, levels, you do have more of a hold, even though you're like up in this esoteric, um, um, you know, subconscious area you have more of a hold of yourself. So you tell yourself like, this is the trigger, I'm going to unwind. Mm. Mm. It, it helps sounds, a lot. It sounds really dumb, but like similar to like anxiety. Remember how I told you your anchor word is healing? So the most powerful thing anyone can ever learn in their life is that your body and your mind are like in their own worlds, but they can work together. And so the subconscious mind, which science has never actually been able to trace in psychology and like understanding those thoughts, it's your body. And if your mind isn't controlling the story or the narrative, like your body does its own shit, like autoimmune disorders, um, like all of this stuff that happens, it's because your mind has lost the control and you're not connected with what's going on. So like, you know, rashes and all of these symptoms is your body's reacting to something and it's fighting something and uh, under stress and your mind isn't managing the stress right. So for me, like whenever I'm going into something, like it's really as powerful as just like telling yourself what you're doing. Like you're not scared, you're really excited, you're a little nervous, this means something to you. Like it's the power of word is so powerful. It's linking the two, the mind and body together. So like even going to sleep, I've struggled with sleeping, hyperactive mind. Literally I'll go to bed, I'm like, Kiba, you're going to sleep. Like allow yourself to unwind, allow yourself to fall asleep. And so what I do is like really heavy breathing because like when I hear heavy breathing, it signals to myself that I'm asleep already. So I'm like, and then I'll listen to like specific waves and it's been helping me. I think way more people need to be more self-aware. I don't think they understand themselves or their body or why they do what yeah. they do or what their body wants and needs. I think it's like a lot of, um, you know, short fixes. Like people are popping melatonins all the time. And like, you know, like I get it. Like it's, you want to sleep and it's frustrating when you can't sleep. But like take the long route to like teaching your body how to sleep and follow those creative uh, circadian rhythm for yourself. And you know, like don't drink coffee af after a certain time if it's keeping you up. Like you have to give up something to like gain something else. Bodybuilding is, is interesting. It's very interesting. You're literally like crafting your body. Yeah, Isn't that it's, insane? it's forcing it to have all of this muscle when it doesn't need it. Like there's absolutely no need for a man to have like outrageous amounts of muscle. This is so inefficient. I'm really shocked you said that because like that's how I felt. Like I used to be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say for a man because like you have a good physique. I don't think it's overdone and I don't think it's under. You're like at a good point. But to the point where like you're walking, I also watched that reel of yours. I did my research oh, yeah. on you. Everyone's in the UK after the first lift. <laughs> um, to be to that point where you can't mobily move, I don't think that should be a goal for anyone. I'm not a huge bodybuilder fan 
although I did bodybuilding for like three years to build my base and my foundation, um, bodybuilding has its utility. The sport itself, I think it's very detrimental and like it's not necessary. I used to be 20 pounds heavier of muscle and I was like not as healthy as I am right now. And so I think each person knows that weight, but generally you need to be able to move your body and not feel like you're broken. Like, do, do you ever do a, like a, a bikini competition? No, I would competition? never. No. I would never. You would I, never? I would never because like, people like me, I, have to be, I have to be so filtered on camera. Because it's, so many women do it and it's like, it's okay, pretty I'm gonna, I'm gonna for say. women to push themselves to get their body fat percentage that low is like, it's really extreme. I'm already extreme, I'm ext um, I try to be extreme constructively, but since I, I've been in the fitness field for so long, and one thing I forgot to mention about Evolve Nation, it's that number one, it came to life because I couldn't stand all the bullshit teas and the buff programs and the very fabricated idea of fitness, and so that already was a huge turnoff for me, and I couldn't contribute to it. So that's one aspect. And then growing my knowledge in the fitness field and seeing what it meant to be on a deficit, what it meant to um, put your body through overtraining, and especially as a woman, not a man, where you don't have the testosterone levels and you have you know, you know your monthly cycle that you could lose. And there's so many health effects for women going on a low body fat percentage like that. And then to throw on top of that, the supplementation, the unnatural supplementation, I'm like, oh, like I, would, I want nothing to do with this. It's not healthy. And I think it's creating really bad long-term um, effects with food relationship, body image, dysmorphia, and it's terrible because there are really good people who go into the sport competitively and they come out completely different persons. Well, that's why I stopped because I'd, I'd never been in a situation where I was so out of tune with my body and I, I was just craving the worst foods after I competed and I just binged relentlessly for three weeks afterwards. I've never had that relationship with food apart from after the competition and almost like a few weeks out from competing. Wow. Everything started going crazy. And then I never had this, such a negative image of myself because I was constantly looking in the mirror like Matt, not big enough, not lean enough, like, yeah. oh, no, can't see the definition in my hamstrings. Just like, it's just so unhappy with the way I looked when in reality, I looked back to that condition that I was in, I was like, what the hell? That was so ridiculous. Good. I'm in yeah. such good shape. Like I'm not the, the leanest, the most shredded I've been, but I like the way I look. Okay, well I'll give you a woman's point of view, because men really care. Like most women do not want. Oh yeah, yeah. I I have discovered that. I, I used to think, oh the big I am and the lean I am, the more girls are gonna like me. No, but that's no. not I think as long as you just look athletic, that's that's all you need. Yeah, but I mean, even for myself, like people would ask me, like, are you attracted to only fit guys? And it's like, absolutely not. Like I'm attracted to a, what's, I guess, a normal guy that doesn't have a muscular build. Like he doesn't need to be physically jacked for me to be attracted or even like muscle tone. Like he could just be, if you have a healthy life, like you're, you're attractive. Like how, the standards you carry yourself out with, the mindset that you have, the personality, the conversations you can carry out, that's that's what's really gonna be attractive. Because you can look the part, but the minute you start talking, if what you're saying is ugly and you're just not interesting, then your looks really, they, they have an expiration date eventually. Um, so I think, yeah, looking good is important to answer yeah, what they, I was saying. Like, people used to say the same thing about me, like, oh, you're, but you're only into girls that are like into their fitness and like lift weights, whatever. I was like, not really. But what I did realize is that I, I do find that if I'm in a relationship with someone who likes to take care of themselves, it doesn't mean they have to go to the gym and lift weights, but if they do value their health and they have an active lifestyle and they're doing something, it doesn't matter what that is, yeah. then there's a higher chance that we're gonna get along. So I've been in a relationship with some women in the past who, you know, they used to smoke, they used to drink all the time and they didn't really do anything active. Yeah. And I was like, mm, this isn't really working. Yeah. And I was, I felt like I was getting sucked into their lifestyle. Because if you go out just for a casual dinner and they'd want a drink, then they'd be like, oh, come on, don't be boring. Have a drink with me. And you're like, 
Okay. Yeah. And then I was doing that all the time. And I was like, this actually, isn't what I like to do. Yeah, yeah, and that's oh my god, that's crazy because like, it's I get like I said, when you're in love, you have emotions. You're gonna do a lot of things that um, people you care about do, but with relationships specifically, it's very hard. Um, communication is really important because most of the time you gravitate towards someone who has common goals to you because it's much easier to cooperate but it's very possible for opposites to thrive together mm. not saying that this person is really unhealthy but not being judgmental like that person doesn't have to be into bodybuilding but they could be active in their own way but it's very challenging to try to because you feel like not understood Right, when you value um, act, being active and, I don't know, going to sleep earlier, whatever you do, but the other person's completely conflicting with that, then it becomes really hard for you to be yourself, and that in turn makes the relationship feel weird. There's going to be a lot of arguments. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's good to be, to be slightly different and have your own hobbies and values. Yeah. Because you can learn from each other and you can not have like nice constructive discussions about you different points of view. Mm -hmm. I think like if, if I was to be in a relationship with someone who is exactly the same with me, like the, the female version of me, okay. I think that would just be weird. With, uh, you said a female that's exactly it, like you. Yeah, so if I was in a relationship with a female version of me who's exactly the same as me, yeah. who would just and agree, would with, a, agree with everything that I say, we don't disagree with anything, and we like and do exactly the same thing, I think that that's Might boring. Be a bit boring. Do you want me to yeah. do the psychology behind that? So the psychology behind that and one of the core reasons why um, triggers to why people cheat. We are attracted to exotic attracts. This is psychology, this is in my opinion. And so you're always going to want what you can't have. Okay, This is shown in many cases. Women with curly hair, I want straight hair. Thick women, I want to be thin. Thin women, I want to be thick and vice versa. When you have something and you you lost kind of gratitude for it and you've normalized it you start to want the next exotic thing um, and exotic isn't just like you know that that's a person from that country or whatever but it's anything that you couldn't have so you know those things that your parents don't let you do you start to want to rebel and do um, that person that um, is so different from you becomes very curious and now you want to like you're intrigued in that and that that feeling of intrigue sparks something in you that you never felt before so yeah, being with someone that's exactly like you, you lose all of that interest. And that's why like in relationships, if you want a really thriving relationship, like don't ever stop working on yourself. You should keep evolving. Because it's the minute that you, every, when you become, when people know everything about you and they're certain on that, there's nothing else around it, you are less mysterious, you are less interesting. So keep working on yourself, whether you're in a relationship or not, and you're gonna keep gravitating people around you and your life is going to be a lot more abundant. With, with everything that you've got going on at the moment, so I can tell you're very busy and you're very driven, you're very focused, do you have time for a relationship? The answer is no. Because I find that a tricky one because I know some relationships for me haven't worked out because I haven't put enough time aside to, to spend with them, and to go out to do things with them. But I have a serious question though. Like, would you, did you have the, the, the honest conversation of like, it's not a priority or you just tried to have the best of both worlds? Like you wanted a relationship, but you also wanted to grind. I think particularly that <clears throat> the reason why it didn't work out, I was more focused on the grind. And I think I had just done four months in Ibiza. So I had had like a summer of just having fun and not really focusing on work and I came back and I'm like, right, I need to focus on my work. And I just so happened to meet someone as well at the same time. I was just like, at that point in time, the priority was the work and the things I wanted to do. And I put that above trying to make the relationship work. Yeah. And I saw that she, she deserved better. She deserved to be with someone who was going to invest more of the time into that's the very relationship. Sure. So I was just like, this. I kind of tried to make it work and then we were having the same arguments over and over again. I was like, okay, this is not going to work. Yeah. That's very mature. I feel like that's a topic that I would like more people to talk about, especially as influencers, entrepreneurs, whatever the case is. Um, you know, there's a lot of sacrifices that go into building your brand, and there's sacrifices that are not understood because they're 
they're just completely different people like you would never have to actually voluntarily give up seeing your family seeing your friends um, you know there were phases where I wanted to be in a relationship but I actually had to say no to myself you know that's a type of discipline that not many people could even understand what it feels like um, because of you know that urge and that urge to like want to feel that type of love you know that's different from self-love but know that you know I have to kind of put this on the back burner right now because this comes first even though like my brands and your brands are a purpose it's still a sacrifice it's still hard and not many people really speak on that aspect of entrepreneurship and I think it's really important because like that comes with a lot of dark emotions and you have to be able to acknowledge those emotions and not judge them and trust the journey and really keep showing up and um, you know that's what I believe entrepreneurship is it's not just you know work eight to whatever 16 hours a day it's being able to be mature and outgrow certain desires in order to hit a certain goal in your life it's like being stronger than your desires I think I've, I've struggled to be with people who don't understand that and also those people who just have they have loads of free time mm -hmm. like their lifestyles is completely different to mine maybe they have a job but it's not really taken up a, you know a, a huge amount of time so all that spare time they have they want to spend with you mm -hmm. but they don't understand that I just don't really have a huge amount of spare yeah. time so then they get like upset or angry when you know I'm not spending the, that time that they yeah. want so I, I, I still have people like that in my life do you? I have a few, but I feel like for a relationship to work with me now, they have to have their own stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And then we both make time when we're free to meet up, and do whatever, but then yeah. we go back to doing our thing. I think it's just having being with someone who understands. Yeah, because I'm, honestly, I'm, I don't want this to be misread. I'm not implying that relationships can't work. If you're an entrepreneur, I'm not saying relationships are going to fail. Um, depending on that phase in your in your business growth, wherever you're at, you know how much you're willing to commit and how much a relationship takes from you. Um, but there are many entrepreneurs, like power couples, that actually support and feed one another's ambition because there's nothing like coming home to a hug to someone that you love that kind of can, can reset you. It's, I would say, even harder to come home to yourself your thoughts, your worries, and having to reset yourself. So there's pros and cons of both, and I think it's just being able to internalize which one is the best option for you and being honest about that, and having the strength to make that decision fully and commit to it. Mm. That's what I believe. Like, and until that person does come, that can align with my lifestyle and um, has their own thing, and you know, we merge well together, then it's so well. I'm gonna come here and just go on this. <laughs> Oh, there we go. This is how I'm warming up my body. There we go. Like kids going to the park. <laughs> Guys, I said to be playful. This is this is what I love. Ooh.